Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today in this video, I wanted to go ahead and help out the new players who are either freshly hitting level 100 or they're in ultimate, but they don't really understand where to farm. Just in general, this is going to this is going to have a mixture of basically beginning farming routes slash um, a little bit past that. It really depends on your build, right? So this build or this video is not really going to talk about the skeleton key dungeons. I will have them linked. I'm basically just going to copy paste this into the comments. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and get started. They're kind of ordered as well from the beginning. So here we go um, This is also pretty decent for reputation. It's okay for farming legendaries uh, It's good for finding MIs. MIs are monster in frequency. Since we're going to be specifically killing bosses You will be finding MIs of those bosses specifically. So to start off, we're going to be starting off with a secret quest um, if you don't know anything about the secret quest you're in luck because this basically this video is going to show the secret quest while showing the farming routes so the first area is going to be right literally out of the first town in devil's crossing right here you're just going to go ahead and go right and follow this way now this is going to be potentially one of the more challenging ones so if you're new just skip this part and wait for basically the next couple ones these are all part of the side quest uh to open up the i think it's john bourbon but more importantly like low car not low car, that's after. Actually, I think you may even need this for low car. I don't really know. Anyway, though, you'll see the boss coming up right here in a second. That skill's not ready. That is some mean poison. And here he is, the Guardian of Drag. Now, I think each of these guardians has their own MI, Monster Infrequent. I don't remember exactly for sure. Let's see. Pop. Uh, I don't think so. So now on to the next location, which is going to be Warden's Lab. All of them are pants. Got it. So Warden's Lab is right here. Now, it's cool to note that also for Wardens, if you decided to just go backwards, you can farm a lot of Aether Crystals as well. I think there's a secret path to get to Warden, but I forgot, because it's been, it's been quite a long time since I've tried to look and uncover the secrets in the early acts. Can I go this way? Yeah, I can. Good. I can't do that yet. I can't do that yet. I like to just do a quick little run on each one of these crystals as well while I'm here. Poke. And poke. And poke. I'm pretty sure there's always a hero mob like right here. I think at least. Oh yeah, here he is. Okay, Broken Hills is gonna be next. Now, at Broken Hills, we're going to have uh, two different things as well. So, uh, a couple things to note about Broken Hills is sometimes you can find five, four, maybe seven hero spawns. Actually, like, right at that clump right there, I find them a lot. Um, if you decide to go to Steps of Torment, Steps of Torment's here, so you would take this route and go down. What we're going to be showing this go around is the next Guardian. And as you're going to the next Guardian, unfortunately, I didn't seem to find the rares yet. Um you can find a bunch of rares. Remember that Grimdon does have randomly generated monsters, so sometimes your farm, or not your farm runs, <laughs> play a bit of RuneScape, but uh, your runs are going to vary with how much stuff you find. That's why I like also fighting the guaranteed bosses, 
And then while you're going to the guaranteed bosses, you may find some other guys as well. This is going to be for the next side quest, or the guardian. Okay, next up, we've got Cronley's Hideout. You can also just do Old Arcovia. It doesn't really matter the order, to be honest. So from here, we're just going to run north into the mine entrance. Now, this is also not, like, the best thing to do. But the thing is, is farming reputation... Or, sorry, farming infamy for Cronley takes quite a long time compared to most other things. So doing this is actually pretty nice because you get the infamy for him. And, of course, when you have Nemesis reputation infamy then you can spawn nemesis bosses and then doing these rotations with nemesis bosses is much more fun, much more enjoyable, and you find much more items. Here's the guy you're looking for. Now, alternatively, you could just you could just leave right after killing that guy if you find the purple early. Like I said, I like to just farm the area because I'm trying to get Cronley's rep. So I'm just basically going to run through here and then spin around the other way and then go out the exit. Yeah, Dynamite's good for unlocking areas. Dynamite's very good for blowing up duplicate legendaries. Blowing up the duplicate legendaries can get you the uh, rare materials, which can just save you a lot of time in general. But you can also craft Dynamite. And then we just tap right over here, and then we're pretty much done. There's another dynamite. So now we're going to go to Cronley's Hideout. Now, there is a quest in Cronley's Hideout, uh, actually in Act 1, I think, that I fucked up on. And there's a, there's a person that you can choose to kill or not. I honestly don't really know the quest line, but I'd recommend for you to not fuck up like I did, because it basically removes a purple from the zone, which kind of sucks. You know... I don't really like that Grimdon has options like that, but that's life, you know. No complaining. Free game. No bitching. Actually, it's not free, but, you know, shh. That skill's not ready. It's important to note that when you're doing Cronleys as well, these areas down here and here contain the bees, so that's not reputation for Cronleys. Now this, this is where you would find a normal, another purple named guy, but that's the quest that I fucked up on. And it doesn't really matter if you fuck up on normal and elite, because you're not going to be farming those. It's really just ultimate. But it's not that big of a difference at the end of the day. Ooh, we're reaching 8 minutes already? This is going to be like a 25 minute video. Ree! Okay, and then we've got Cronley himself. If you want to save time, having the Ulo Devotion for cleansing waters does save a little bit. It's not really something worth specking into, but you see that shield on him right there? We can actually cleanse that shield off him and then he dies much, much, much quicker. Sometimes there's a little chest here that spawns as well. Nothing really that good. Okay, so next up in the rotation, we are going to go to Twin Falls. Twin Falls is probably one of the best things to do, for sure, as a beginner. Like, if you if you don't want to do any of this stuff, at least do the Twin Falls one, because it's very easy and very quick. I do like to, like, attack big packs whenever, I don't know, it's just satisfying for me to kill them. But ideally, you're just looking for the hero spawns like these. Royal Jelly is pretty nice. Royal Jelly goes into uh, potions that increase life regen by flat and percentage, so pretty decent. Uh, there's going to be a purple wasp inside here. 
And occasionally some hero guys as well, which is really nice. There we go. My minions are stuck, they won't move. Okay, guys. Look at them, they're just stuck. Stop it, attack, attack. There's, he, he won't attack. <laughs> He's just stuck running, dude. There we go. Okay. After here, we're gonna go into Smugglers to kill the troll, which is gonna be here. Now this troll drops an MI, which is like, it's a two-handed troll act. This is used in a couple of relics and costs 100k if you choose to buy it at the secret shop. So choosing to actually just hold a few of these is not a bad idea. One shot chest close to the B matriarch. There you go as well. Get your free legendary. Uh, this would be his MI, the Bone Crusher. It looks like this. Okay. After we are finished with here, we're going to go to the Rotting Croplands at the Queen. Now, the Rotting Croplands does spawn, I think it's randomly between one of these, like, clusters here. You'll notice, um, obviously, because we've done the quest already in the previous difficulties, but it's just that little highlighted underground cave thing, basically. This one, I don't even know if it can be here. I don't think I've ever seen it here. Nope, not in this one. Usually I see it right here in this. Mm, nope. Let me check over here to the right. Oh, it's not to the right. Can it be up here? Oh, there it is. There it is. Now, if you've already completed the quest, then all you gotta go do is just run right to the Hive Queen's lair. Usually you'll find, like, two hero mobs as you're going there. Very good density in this place as well. Can't do that There's one. There's the second one right there. Uh, actually, have to go around this way. Oh, no, there's three. Good. Wait for second phase. Next one is going to be Blood Grove. Now this one is, this one is pretty inconsistent to be honest, and I don't know if I'd recommend it unless you're really rep farming. But you know, some people just like doing big rotations, so we're going to go show it. I haven't really tested it much either, so I can't confirm how consistent it is. Basically, by the shrine in Blood Grove down south here, in this region, I want to say where I'm circling is another purple named spawn. He is usually guarding the... Wow, we're blocked off there? <laughs> He's usually guarding the NPCs that you have to save for the quest. Is he here? Not on this side. It's 
It's also the Chthonic Rift. If you happen to find the Chthonic Rift, these are really good for leveling, in my opinion. I don't think you can even spawn this far, but I'm just checking to make sure. Scoping out the perimeter. You also will get Chthonic Seals of Binding here, which is pretty nice. There he is. I like finding legendary accessories. Pretty cool. So next up, we're going to go to Astrakhan Road. Now, this is another one that is not recommended for the new players. This is going to be step three on the secret quest. Actually, now that I think about it, you could go backwards and backtrack to find the purple Chillmane Yeti guy, but... Those guys are pretty tanky, and they're pretty big bullies for new players, so I don't know if I would really recommend those either. This is where my Drogon Shrine is. So that's what, here? Somewhere around here? If you take the next one. We are actually almost done with our rotation. Now, I like adding this in mainly because this boss right here that we're about to fight drops pants that are so good for so many different things. And if you happen to find a double, a double rare, which the chances of you finding a double rare off this guy is like, I don't even know, <laughs> extremely rare. But it, it would be used for so many different builds, basically. A lot of people often sacrifice a piece of gear for resistances. This is one of the things you would sacrifice for resist. But unfortunately, I did not find his pants. Do I have them here somewhere? Maybe? No, I've stored all of them. Oh, actually, it's like, it's these, basically. But you can get much better old ones. Sometimes there's a hero spawn over there. Over here, there's a stone. This takes us to Mad Queen. Mad Queen is a pretty pissed off boss and definitely not one I would attempt if you're new. Uh, she does have an MI Legendary drop that's a gun, I think, that gives ridiculous ignite duration or burn duration and something else. Only thing to note about Mad Queen is when she glows red, she gets crazy damage and lifesteal. Um, you can cleanse that with Ulo if you have it, but she will most likely instantly kill you if she has it on. Okay, next up we've got the last one, which is the last part of the secret, which is going from East Marsh, or going to East Marsh. Now, another reason why I like to put this one into the rotation is I actually just discovered that Sentinel, who is the last boss of the side quest that we're going to go fight, has a 2% chance at a recipe drop um, that is insane for Doombolt. Can't open. 
Uh, I can't really link you the sheet, it's just a wordpad right now. It'll be posted in the video once I upload it. Convocation spell like in PoE. There isn't, but if you move too far, your minions teleport to you. So if I push my minions over there and keep them there and then blink, they'll port to me because they're too far. Yeah, you also have full control over your minions. So if you decide to create an obstacle course for your minions, you can be like, all right, minions, go, let's go. One, two, three, hop, hop, let's go. 14 laps on me, let's go, hop, 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 spider, you're cheating. Go, 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 go. It's pretty nice. It's fun to mess with your summons if they trigger you. Uh, we'll go this way. Uh, it is cool to note as well that um, oh, that um, this quest line that I'm doing right now, I can't carry it. I'm full. Holy shit! This quest line that I'm doing right now, the secret quest line, I believe will award you with one stat point and one skill point. that this guy is a bit of a tough fight I'm not sure what his damage type is but I want to say a lot of it is physical my pets are very very strong so Make sure you understand that. And this is the guy who can drop that recipe. Anyway, that's pretty much going to be the run for you guys. If you guys have any more other farm locations you'd like to tag in, feel free to post them in the comments so you guys can read. Remember that one of the op or one of the awesome things about Grim Dawn is if you get bored of doing, you know, like Shattered Realm or Crucible or spam running, you know, Skeleton Key Dungeons, you've got the option of doing pretty much what I'm doing right now. And it's really not a bad idea to do this because when you're trying to craft your mythical relic, you're going to need so many different materials that doing something like this is actually rewarding and will save you time in the end. May not be the most efficient thing, but it does actually work. So don't feel like you, you know, don't dismiss this as like, oh, well, you know, I could just run Shattered Realm and get, you know, 20 uniques a run. It's still okay to do things like this, right? I know a lot of people can get a little dis discouraged. Yeah, get discouraged when they see, you know, one thing happen and then they see something like this. But remember that games are meant to be super fun as well. Not everything is about efficiency. I know that the transition from PoE to Grim Dawn can be a bit different since they're so different. But remember that fun is a big thing. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. I will put this in the comments below and sticky it. So take care, have a wonderful time, and get to farming, boys.